Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott and hopefully by now you've got a PS5 or you're very close to getting one because chances are Spider-Man Miles Morales will be the game that you're going to play on that to show off everything it's capable of doing. Um, Sony did come out earlier this year and say that it's also going to be backwards compatible on the PS4 and um, well there's going to be a PS4 version of it anyway but I've been living with the PS5 and Spider-Man Miles Morales for the last couple of weeks and I thought I'd put together a review. Is this the game that shows off the PlayStation 5 and does it live up to being pretty much a sequel to the Spider-Man game from 2018, even though it feels a little bit like a DLC in regards to the project ambition and in regards to how big the overall size of the game is. Can it hold up to such lofty expectations? Chances are this will be your first game on PS5 and it kind of needs to sell the system overall. So does it do that? Short answer, yes. This game looks absolutely stunning. You can tell that it was built from the ground up to have an incredible amount of texture detail. You've got the ray tracing present and correct, reflections in all different surfaces, even down to Miles Morales' individual suit. He has these sort of red strips of, I think, plastic on his shoulders that reflect the world around him, as do his eyes whenever you pop on the photo mode. Things like that are just a next-gen level of detail that I think really comes through here. Um, sadly, though, you do have to pick between performance and resolution modes. Um, in the options, you can either have full on 4K, um, you know, with all the different bells and whistles that I just mentioned, all the different next-gen lighting effects and everything else, um, you can have that in 4K if you play at 30 FPS. If you want to play at 60, you have to knock all those things off, um, which I did think was a little bit of a negative, seeing it, you know, the whole next-gen promise and everything like that. Um, I have to imagine that that'll just be the case with Spider-Man 2, the official Spider-Man 2, the full-on sequel, um, you know, once devs get better acquainted with the PS5 tech, um, assumedly we'll get, you know, 4K, 60 60 FPS, etc. But you do have to pick between the two uh, for this. Miles' animations are brilliant. I think, you know, it would have been super easy for them, for Insomniac to carry over most of Peter Parker's animations and, you know, make Miles more of like a, a skin swap when you're playing as him. And um, because he is another Spider-Man, the story is very much built around him becoming Spider-Man. What does it mean to step into the shoes of someone that you've idolized your entire life and then have him sort of, you know, be taken out of the picture somewhat and you have to step in, look after New York City and become Spider-Man. Um, in regards to how that played, it would have been super simple for that to feel like the 2018 game. Um, they do so much with giving Miles individual animations for every last thing that you could do with Peter Parker, um, whether that be, you know, perching on the edge of a building, just the way he swings. Um, the big thing that will really um, stand out, though, is the amount of transitional animations that are here. Um, pretty much anything that you can do, the game will find a way to animate, to connect those things together. Um, there's a new trick system here where you don't have to hold uh, triangle and circle anymore with different direction buttons to flip and spin while you're swinging through the city. Uh, now you just hold square and push different directions. But you can push you know, multiple directions with square and then go back to swinging or go back to air dashing or attacking out of that. Um, and the game will find a way to stitch all of that stuff together. Um, you can force it to freak out if you do too much ones and um, some things will overlap but for the most part the first time that you see everything come together um you know from the way that miles just the way he jumps off a building is straight up into the spider-verse it's just full-on um, you know, he dives backwards, looks at the camera, and then falls down straight into a swing, straight into a set of air tricks, straight into the next combat scenario. All that stuff is great. Um, just playing as Miles feels like this sort of scrappy individual that's figuring out his powers, um, which very much lines up with exactly where he is in the story. Speaking of transitioning from one thing to another, holy hell, the SSD on the PS5. Um, we've already, you know, heard various reports about how this game can load in, you know, literal seconds, and that stuff is totally true. Um, you can literally just pop up the uh, the overworld map, fast travel somewhere, and the game will literally load it in a matter of seconds. I'm talking like two or three seconds. You get a, a fade to black, fade back up, and you're right there. Um, the actual fast travel animations that were in 2018's game, where you see Spidey on the subway, and um, where he was fast traveling, they're now optional. Um, you can just go in the menu and turn them on if you really want to see Miles hanging out on a subway, but I would recommend turn that off and just lightning quick dive through stuff. Um, also, the way the PS5's architecture is built, um, one of the new features of the UI is that you can hit the home button on the PlayStation and, big up, and bring up a series of cards along the bottom on the, the new version of the XMB. Um, and these cards let you jump into specific points in the game. So if you just need to mop up a certain set of collectibles, you want to try a specific challenge again, but you're not anywhere near that in the actual world 
world itself, you can kind of navigate the game on a system level. Um, what this means in you know the practicality is that I brought up that home screen, I dove into a combat trial, I did that, I got the power up, the unlockable from it, then I hit the home button again, then I jumped over and did a different challenge, I unlocked that thing. And sort of within about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I'd mopped up sort of six different goals that on the original game or in the vast majority of other games right now uh, would take a hell of a lot longer because you'd literally have to traverse from place to place. Um, on PS5, just because of the SSD and because of the way that Spider-Man has been built, you can literally jump from point to point lightning fast. Um, it speeds everything up in a way that you didn't realize you needed until it just happens right in front of you. It's ludicrously satisfying. Another thing for the SSD is how it affects game development. Now we know that, you know, Miles Morales is going to be on PS4, but I'm genuinely fascinated by how they're going to reduce what this game is to make it work on PS4. Um, because a lot of the combat encounters um, go from outside to in. You're literally smashing through a window and continuing fighting with the SSD, with the PS5 keeping up, loading all those assets around you so you don't even really notice, um, you know, any sense of loading. Everything is just butter smooth the whole way through. Um, you know, you're smashing through windows that have the reflections on them. Um, stuff that takes you outside to in, fighting dudes back out the wall into a car chase and then chasing someone down. Um, it's real next level stuff, or at least it's things that we, like I said, didn't realize weren't possible, but it's the sort of stuff that your brain sort of goes, okay, there probably should have been a load there, but this game just pulled that off and I'm still going. Um, those things are so promising and so ambitious for the future. And like I said, this game is still tethered to the PS4 in many respects because it is going to have a version on there. But I'm so curious what the hell they do uh, with the full-on sequel. Um, because you assume he would be able to be Spider-Man, have a, have a different fight that goes inside, do some sort of mini mission inside, jump back through a vent back into the main city and keep going. Multiple times in the story, uh, Miles just fires two webs to either side of like a vent or a hole in the wall and you're immediately back in the open world. It's ludicrous, it's ridiculous. Uh, I, I absolutely love this stuff. Um, you can check out the PS5 review as well, the console review um, for me talking about the SSD because you know they talked about it for a while but I think seeing it in action and literally timing it and being like, okay, I literally just loaded this whole game world in a couple seconds is really, really cool. In terms of the DualSense controller, um, again, I talk about this in the PS5 review, um, but the DualSense has a whole bunch of features built into the controller itself. Uh, it has so many high fidelity motors, it has haptic triggers, um, triggers that will actually fight you with resistance based on what's going on on the screen. Um, in something like Astro Boy that you know comes across and you need to decompress a spring so the trigger is harder to push down. Um, in Miles Morales, I don't think it's anywhere near as well integrated. Um, they do do some cool stuff with like Miles surging with electricity and you'll feel the controller kind of rumble with little pops of vibration in the middle to kind of try to simulate and um, the idea of him bursting with power. Things like that are kind of cool. I, I put them more in the gimmick bracket, but it's fun. It's cool enough. Um, but, I, you know, it's, it's not going to stand out too much. And um, for as much as they talked about, you know, Miles being fully charged up with electricity and it'll feel like you're, you know, wielding power in your hand. Um, it's a controller vibrating. It's not going to blow you away, but it is kind of cool. Speaking of the electricity stuff, um, the way that Miles controls in combat is way more fleshed out than the way that Peter Parker did. Um, the game's combat difficulty, though, if you're on the standard difficulty, very much continues from where 2018's game left off. Um, you're going to have to already be extremely comfortable with various dodges, grabbing objects from around you, throwing them into someone, and launching another enemy airborne, swinging over here, you know, slowing time down with L2 so you can redirect yourself in real time. You kind of need to be, like I said, super comfortable with where that game left off because this one just runs with it. Um, the additional enemy um, enemy types that get brought in really just want you to experiment even more with you know, factoring in your additional moveset. Um, and speaking of that, uh, Miles has two additional skill trees now. One is Venom Powers, which is the electricity that he sort of finds that he can conduct or whatever, um, which means that you can just hold L1 and do a charged up punch, a charged up dash grab, um, and you get a couple more moves as well, which are really, really cool. The other side of the, of the new skill tree is Camouflage. Um, obviously, if you're a Miles Morales fan, you know that he can go invisible anyway. But the genius thing about this in, um, in game, in combat, is that you can just tap up on the D-pad, go invisible, and reset any combat encounter to make it a stealth encounter. So if you were already trying to pick some dudes off and you got spotted or something like that, or you're in the middle of a brawl and you just want to kind of take a breather, um, tap up, go invisible, get some distance. Um, and in, in the cases of when it's not a full-on, you know, arcade brawl challenge, 
challenge, you'll hear the AI say like, oh, where did he go or whatever. The game, you know, the scenario will reset and you can resume just picking dudes off. It's a great way to continue to mesh the, the action and the stealth side of things um, that I felt were way more disparate in the 2018 game. Either you were full on Arkham style stealth or you were full on combat. Um, I feel like Miles walked those two things very well. Um, as a slight negative though in, in that regard, um, the actual skill trees don't really do that much. It's very much, you know, 20% more damage or 20% damage reduction or, you know, you're going to throw this dude into this dude and now they all get affected by whatever um, electricity stun was uh, afflicting the guy that you threw. Um, I kind of wanted to see a little bit more from the skill tree, but um, again, I think we'll get all that in Spider-Man 2. Overall though, the combat, once you get it down, is absolutely electric. I mean, literally, but also it looks really gorgeous. It's very much dynamic. It, like I said, it folds into the whole idea of it showing off what the PS5 can do. It's a very stunning looking game anyway, but no frame rate drops, nothing like that. Just full on, you know, the game will keep up with you. You factor in all the transitional animations, things like that. And if you want to take out 20 dudes in a blur of web shooters, explosions, and you know, electric uppercuts, then you absolutely can. For the last thing, um, the only thing that really knocks the package um, is that overall, you know, factoring in story and the overall structure of the game, it does feel like glorified DLC, like in the best way possible, but it does feel like they had this initial plan for a DLC that somewhere along the way was stretched out to become a PS5 launch game. Um, and it's, you can kind of feel that, like the story itself is really not very long. I clocked it in, I'm gonna say about five hours. Um, let's just say four to six is like a borderline. Uh, and that was mainly going main mission to main mission, but um, I did make a point of deviating away to do a bunch of side missions um, because side missions now come through an app that Miles can access, um, which means that you know you are sort of looking after New York City because any of the citizens can just tell you there's a crime happening or my car's stuck or I'm a construction worker and I'm stuck on the side of a building or whatever. Um, and that means that you can enjoy getting you know lost in those deviations for a bit. But if you just go main mission to main mission, it's very, very short. Um, and I think that it, it stands out because at the beginning, Everything is very well paced. You're being in introduced to characters very well. The dialogue is great. The energy between characters and the cast themselves is like, is, you know, is spot on. But towards the latter half, various massive revelations start happening um, that just happen in quick succession with no real time to breathe. And I feel like it rushes to an ending and um, to a big finale um, that I even in there's, a, there's one shot in the end that I just I wasn't buying the whole thing they were doing towards the end to keep it as vague as possible. Um, and my face at the end was just like, oh, OK, I guess I guess we're doing that. Sure. Um, and that, that might be divisive, we'll see. And um, we'll obviously pick it apart on podcasts and stuff. But point being, I didn't find the story to be that satisfying. I thought that 2018's game did a much better job. Um, even though you're playing with expected plot beats of you know Peter Parker and um, Otto Octavius's relationship, the idea of whether Otto is actually gonna become Doc Ock or not, even if you go in thinking that's gonna be a foregone conclusion, and they very much had it in the trailers, um, they made that relationship so well done. It was such a slow burn. It was such a, I don't know, tragic loss to that character that he'd given in to becoming Doc Ock that you really cared about you know fighting him or trying to save him from himself in the final fight. Um, those, uh, that idea of uh, pathos and thematics and that idea of a slow burn payoff or a character based payoff is really not here um, in the same way. And that's, for me, that comes from what I have to assume is just the reality of the project itself. Um, that it's maybe started as a DLC and was now sort of sold as this separate thing. Um, but there are so many side missions and side collectibles and things to do. There's so much to do as Spider-Man in the world that if you just, if you were one of those people that mopped up all the side activities in the 2018 game, um, you can absolutely do that. You know, if we're talking pound for pound, you know, if you're going in for the story, I don't think it's that satisfying. If you're going in to just be Spider-Man in the best looking version of New York ever, then sure, it holds up and the combat's great, the transitional animations are great, the SSD loads very well. There are so many positives there that I do think it holds up. Just know that the story is not the reason you should invest. You should invest because it's more of that end game feeling from the 2018 game. Um, it's kind of that end game feeling made into a full game with a really great character at the core um, and a really great overall sensibility in regards to production value, sound design, aesthetics, etc. All in all, I do think that it takes the box of showing off what the PS5 can do. I sort of said that earlier, but I think once you boot it up and you see just the overall presentation, um, it's pretty much immaculate. Uh, it's the kind of thing where, you know, you 
notice things that you didn't even realize were missing before. Um, the likes of the load times, the likes of reflections, the ray tracing, things like that. The level of texture detail that is just throughout every character. Um, those things really elevate the package. Uh, and I'm super curious just where the PS5 goes from here. Um, I just, I love Miles Morales. I love Into the Spider-Verse. It's my favorite uh, Marvel movie, or I guess it was made by Sony, but my favorite superhero movie just ever. Um, and this very much channels the energy that was in that production. So if you like that movie, you like Miles Morales, you like what he brings to the Spider-Man ephemera, um, or the mythos, then um, it very much ticks all those boxes. I don't think that it's a five-star game because I think it's let down by not being longer, not being more thought out, not having, not pacing its story better. Um, but you know, point for point, it's it's very much enjoyable and it's extremely well put together. So I'm gonna go four stars. Um, I had an absolute blast with it and I'm gonna go back in and just mop up every last collectible just for the living sake of it. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below. You're picking up Spider-Man. Were you a little bit gutted that it's on PS4 and what sort of things are you looking forward to do once you get into the game? For now, I've been Scott from moreculture.com and I'll catch you soon.